consider myself a family member in Normal Polish Center. I stood here simply to caution you that if you do a scan, you'll go get a verbal abuse. If you do 24-hour urine, you'll get a letter not to do it. If you do it, if you did calcium more than two times, you'll get, patient will be told your doctor doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> and if your patient gets for hypercalcemia, sensipar, please don't do it. Such should not occur that we should be abandoned from the market. So I've gone through all this with Jim Norman. So in summary, he's a great guy, he means well. <laughs> But, but I told once Jim, Jim Norman, Jim, what you know, we don't know because we are still the students of NIH, we are students of whatever consensus conference tells us, and he, tell, he tells me what you've seen, obviously, that be more current and don't follow the NIH guidelines. But having done that, I want to just pose a couple of questions as to have you stepped on failures, and if so, what percent? What percent of all the patients that you have removed parathyroid have malignancy, and what percent of them have MEN? How about I talk to the, I think Doug and I pretty much, Doug and I are this close together all day, every day, so I think we know pretty much everything. So I'll just take the first question, because I've known Samesh longer. So I've, uh, we've, we've had the privilege of operating on hundreds of Samesh patients. Don't let him fool you. He's a, he is unbelievably great endocrinologist, and we're we're pleased to have him in the brotherhood. He's he's like a brother to me. Um, failures. Is that what your question was? We've never had a failure ever. No such thing. I think that um, of course no surgeon should ever say that you fail because failures failure occurs to all of us. This is very variable anatomy. If this was easy, we wouldn't have a practice. We have a practice because this is hard sometimes. And it's even after doing, I've done over 13,000 of these operations, it's hard for me sometimes. And sometimes, you know, Doug's done 7,500 of these things. We do these operations together. It's sometimes, it's hard for both of us. You know, we put two of the, the two most experienced people in the room together, the same neck, you know, sometimes we, can, we, don't, we don't cure these people. It's, sometimes it's very hard. Um, but we strive to have a cure rate uh, over 99%, and we we follow our patients. And and uh, of course, when when Samesh, we don't cure yours, you call us on the phone to tell us. Usually, we know ahead of time already. Um, so we we strive for a cure rate that's uh, over 99%. We we maintain it in our database. We're somewhere around 90. 9.4% in first operation, and, and usually when we fail, we can we know why we failed. Uh, what was the next question? It was malignancy. Uh, MENs are uh, pretty uncommon. Uh, we do see a fair amount because our capture area is, you know, the entire United States, but it is pretty doggone rare. I mean, it's way less than one percent. In malignancy, malignancy is way over, way overdiagnosed, and I think I think I've seen maybe three cases of it in my entire career. Doug, uh, it, two. I believe too. Now it gets mistakenly interpreted as malignancy, particularly. And boy, for this this room, this is a valuable piece of information. If you do an FNA of what you see sonographically, you think it's a parathyroid tumor. We caution you: please don't stick a needle in that. You think you may be helping your surgeon by sticking a needle in it, drawing out the the fluid, sending it for a PTH assay, and it's. 28,000 or 500 million or whatever you want it to be to convince yourself that's a parathyroid tumor. But that makes a pathologist see a lot of fibrosis when we take the tumor out and makes them think that that is parathyroid cancer because, as you know, parathyroid cancer doesn't necessarily have a bunch of mitotic figures. It, it is clinically, is it stuck to everything around it? And it is because this fluid makes a big scar reaction. So I would caution on the malignancy, it gets overdiagnosed when someone gets an FNA, but I've only, I, I gotta say, only two. We, we published that, by the way, the FNA thing. We published that in, in the journal Thyroid about a year and a half, two years ago, and it's been widely quoted, and other people have since, since, uh, since sh shown the same thing. So we feel so strongly about it that we will not accept into our practice a tumor that's been needled. 